So I'm here in a very beautiful and different location than the rest of my uh, podcast series so far. I'm in a beautiful town called Ahiak, which is, uh, I guess, part of the town, historic town of Chapala, which is on Lake Chapala, which is in the province of Jalisco, which is in a country called Mexico. I don't think Jalisco is a province, but... It's Jalisco, and it's a state. It's, it's a state. Right, I forgot. It's the United States of Mexico. So, um, but I'm learning a lot of things while I'm here. Um, and I have to say that I'm learning a lot of things from a lot of the people I've met uh, so far in this, this wonderful town, uh, which is very old. It's about 500 years old, and it continues to evolve and have very interesting characters. Uh, and one of the people I've met uh, who we're going to interview now is Pat Apt. Hello, Pat. Hi, how you doing, Chris? Good, thanks. Um, now, you, what really interested me first about, about uh, an artist like yourself living here is, I think, a very interesting work, um, and it seems very uh, individual. It's, it's, there's a lot of nice work here that has a lot of sort of regional imagery woven into it, and there's a set of artists here who are just kind of off on their own thing, uh, off on their own journey. And... Um, both schools are very interesting, but I'm really in, enjoying your work. It could be I could have seen it anywhere, essentially, and I, I would have enjoyed it um, as much as uh, as much as I am now. And uh, another thing that interested me after that was after talking to you was uh, sort of the journey you've had about. I guess you're from Vermont, is it? I'm from Maine. Maine, sorry. Yeah. And uh, you know, you sort of lived um, uh, through some decisions. A lot of artists and, and writers or other people have uh, daydreamed about, which is leaving it behind and, and moving to what some people describe as an artist colony, but you, you're moved to a what is a uh, exotic, faraway locale um, where it's beautiful all year round and, and uh, you can paint outdoors and, and meet other wonderful artists like yourself and, and uh, the beautiful, just surreal scenery. Uh, and, and conditions. Um, so I guess I was hoping to get a little bit of your your story about uh, what sort of challenges or opportunities or maybe some of the myths uh, of this sort of journey has has provided you. But first, I guess we'll just get to know you uh, a little bit better. So you're you're a painter I'm and a, a painter printmaker. And a printmaker. And uh, you've been here for how long? I've been here 21 years. 21 years. Yeah. So you, you know I, I've been coming down for 14 years and I've seen it change. Uh, a lot, so I can only imagine what you've uh, you've seen. Uh, so why don't you describe to us a little bit about um, some of the decisions and events that led to your decision to to move here? Well, uh, you know, I was I was working a job while my kids were in college, and when they finished, I was free to do something more. And I always wanted to come to Mexico and paint. I, the country always attracted me, and I kind of ended up in Ahiheek by accident. Um, I took a wrong turn on the road, had to stay overnight because it was late, and just never left. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> yeah. and, and that happens to a lot of people. It's, it's very strange how people end up here. Everybody's got a story. Yeah, it's not like the next town over or, or the town after that. This is a very unique place where a lot of expats just kind of fall into, in a way. Yeah, it seems to be very much that. So everyone has a, a story about how they fall fall into here. Now you, you actually, you told me earlier, uh, your husband and yourself moved to the coast for a while. Um. Uh, yeah, we tried it for three months. Oh, for but three the, months. But the the heat was too intense even in February. Okay. It's, um, and there wasn't the artistic climate. And we came back. So there really is kind of an energy that that is kind of built here. Well, you know, the day after I got here, I ran into a wonderful gentleman who was a printmaker, and in talking, and I, I didn't have a press available to me, he said, why don't you come work in my studio? And for three or four years, that's what I did. He had been here 20 years. Oh, he and, had been here for 20 years when you first and arrived. So he okay. was a, and I think that happens a lot. The people that have been here for a long time obviously love it. And... People tend to show up in their lives, and somebody facilitates your staying here. <laughs> and, and I do my best to pass along what Bill Gentis did for me, because uh, it was an enormous gift to have a place to work, 
Yeah. And yeah. we showed at the local co-op, and we actually sold work. And we had a little bit of a name, and it, it's a very, very inclusive art community here. Um, we got, I got to know a great number of the young Mexican artists who are middle-aged now, but, <laughs> you know, it's, they're still friends. And um, it's been just a great experience. Well, yeah, it's a very, um, I guess, in being an artist, uh, a lot of people don't understand. There's some very sort of ancient sort of protocols or, or traditions, and part of that is, is, you know, helping each other out or yeah. help, you know, helping a newcomer out and sharing facilities and, and, uh, and things like that. It's a very much, I don't know, without being a guild, it's kind of a, it's kind of a brethren or, a, you know. Well, I, I think whether we're Mexican or whether we're American or whether we're Canadian here in Ahihi. Yeah, that's what I mean. It, we have yeah. something in common by virtue of the fact that our life is dedicated to art as much as anything. Um, when I see an artist whose work I like, I do everything I can to make sure other people get to see it. We just like to share our enthusiasms. Um, if it were music, I'm sure I'd do the same thing. Yeah. yeah. And... Uh... And a, and a particular sort of like tight knit group among visual artists are printmakers. Uh, those well, because they need equipment. Yeah. You know, the the presses are not easy to come by. They take up a lot of space, um, and the techniques are so experimental that people always like to share information about how they did it. Yeah, and uh, I was. I mean, when you just mentioned there was a printmaker with some facilities when you first arrived here, I was surprised. I know that. Uh, you were telling me earlier that uh, the young Mexican artists, printmaking is not readily available. Or it's not a... There's, there's very, very little here. Um, there's very little done to support it because most people don't even know what it is. Okay. Uh, there's a fair amount. There's wonderful printmaking uh, studios in Guadalajara. And groups of people share the studio, help each other with the prints, uh, show as a group and their first-rate work, but it's also a bit of a drive. Um, most of the people that share the studio don't speak English, um, which can be an issue with newcomers. Um, uh, what I'm hoping here is that I'll have a group of people <coughs> who enjoy sharing the space, um, sharing techniques, uh, answering each other's questions, um, I think it would be good support for people learning printmaking. And uh, this is very exciting because you were, you, know, you mentioned you're getting a printing press, an Itaglio uh, mm -hmm. press, and it's arriving from Mexico City. Is that yeah, right? yeah, sometime <laughs> this month after you're gone. <laughs> <laughs> after I'm gone, oh, I was hoping you'd be here year, next year. Well, it's more, uh, it's more enticement to to come back and yeah. and and join in the fray. Um, and I mean, not not to be. Uh, you know, uncouth, but the price for the printing press is pretty reasonable, uh, as I understood it. Um, I mean, you make less here, but some of the materials and supplies... Prices and, are expensive even here. Yeah, yeah. You but, know, it's... Um, but once you have one, it services four, five, six individuals. Yeah, so. yeah, and uh, I guess the one you're getting is brand new, like it hasn't been used. Yes, exactly. Oh, that's really great. Yeah, so <laughs> no worries about balancing and such. Yeah, and you got a nice, uh, nice concrete floor in this studio space. Now you actually live uh, down where my parents are near in the West End. Yeah, I'm a 15-minute walk from the studio. And you've and you've opened up this location um, somewhat recently in the last two months. Yes. And uh, what are some of the, the the opportunities or the challenges you found so far in this new location? Yeah. <laughs> It rained unexpectedly, and I ended up with water in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that problem is resolved. I certainly hope it is. <laughs> it's uh, um, finding a good location. Um, I can't say it was hard because it dropped in my lap, but you can't always find a good location I where see. there's lots of foot traffic uh, because people have to peer in and see the work. You know. Uh, this is better here than it was in the other side of town. Right, and uh, what kind of what kind of traffic? What kind of people are are coming through here on a daily basis? Oh, geez, everybody. Um, get people that have been all over the world, and then end up here, and they're just new, and they like to find out more about the area, 
end up with people that have lived here f almost as long as I have. Um, end up with Mexican art students or young couples from Guadalajara bring a child along to show them some art. Um, the Mexican people here are, are tremendously interesting to talk to as far as art goes. They really get it. Yeah. You know, they look at a picture and it says something to them. They don't worry about what they know. They let their emotions do the work. And, and that's something I love about this area. They, they appreciate art. Yeah. Um. Yeah, you're not uh, <laughs> you're not judged suspiciously as you can be uh, up north, as I, I I think. Yeah, I don't I don't find that so much of a problem. What I find is people are reluctant to go into a gallery because they think they're supposed to have a great deal of information about art. They can't just look at it and enjoy it. They're supposed to know things. Right. And so. It takes a long time to um, have them relaxed enough to actually look at what's on the walls. It's um, it's a difficulty. Yeah, and, and I know um, a lot of galleries. I've worked in galleries all my life, uh, and that's that's the problem. That's the number one reason people don't go in is because they're intimidated. Mm. Uh, and there's ways around it, uh, or ways to to help uh, alleviate that problem. Some of them are just having events. Um, I know in my hometown right now of Hamilton, there's something called the Art Crawl, where all the galleries on the street will open on the same night and stay open late and have bands and receptions and things. So a lot of people feel less intimidated uh, exactly. by going in a big group. So you won't be noticed that you don't know anything or, or something like that. Um, also, uh, I think a lot of problems, people are so... Um, conditioned in a way to go to big blockbuster exhi exhibits at museums and galleries that they, they think they have to pay. Uh, and these smaller galleries and studios, you don't, you don't have to pay. You can just wander in. And you don't have to know anything. You can just go in. If you like something, you've, you've hit the mark. And if you don't, you come back later. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. And the other thing is down here, when we have our openings, there's a few margaritas, there's some wine, there's some snacks. And people get to talking to each other and meet new friends who are also interested in art. Yeah. Because they wouldn't be in a gallery if they didn't have some interest. And so they meet people, uh, people that are like-minded. Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, it, the, the openings are fun here. <laughs> yeah, I bet they are. And I haven't had a chance to experience that yet, but uh, you must tell me all about it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah, the arts and the arts openings, I mean, at least in Canada as well, I mean, it's kind of the only industry where you can have full frontal nudity in the artwork and you can have, like, free beer and, and free food, and it doesn't necessarily make more people come. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's like the bare minimum, really, that's, yeah, yeah. that people, no pun intended, that people expect. So let, let's talk a little bit more about, about your work. What kind of imagery... Uh, that you, you work with or your, your approach? A lot of what I do is landscapes of Mexico. The country is beautiful. Yeah. And, and I go out and paint out in the country. I park the car, I set up my easel, I sit on a chair and I paint the mountains or the lake or whatever I'm painting, mostly the mountains. And I'm just happy. I'm just really enjoying that. When I'm not out there painting, I do a lot of fantasy. You know, I, I do mariachis, the, the musicians. But they're centaurs. They're, they're not real people. Yeah, I noticed they're cent centaur mariachis, which yeah. is an awesome image. But, yeah. I, but I'm enjoying it, you know. Um, there's so much music around here. Whenever you walk down the street, you will hear music coming from the houses or from the cars or even from live music. And it seems to find its way into a lot of my paintings. So there's a lot of dancers, there's a lot of musicians. Um, anything that takes my fancy at a given moment. That's, uh, that's freedom, and I, I know it's, it's very sort of petty, pragmatic, but I look with envious eyes at the, the huge amount of space you can do just large work in, <laughs> you know? And, and oh, since, it's, yeah. since it's such nice weather, um, it's, it's um, short sleeve weather almost all year round. Yes. 
uh, you, your studio can be outdoors. You can yeah. just keep working outdoors every day, and that the amount of space that it affords um, is is mind boggling to someone in a very cold, <laughs> expensive northern climate. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go through well, it. Yeah, this is just a great place to be if you're an artist. Yeah, and uh, so it was. So that affected your work before you moved down here from from Maine. Your work was, or can you? Know, I guess it was well, a long time ago. Well, you know, it's kind of odd that a lot of my work looked strange in Maine and looks uh. perfectly at home here. I have old <laughs> paintings that I've done that you would swear I'd been influenced by Mexico, but I wasn't here yet. Right. It's just, it, for me, it's like my art came home. And, um, and the minute I came across the border, I was home. This, it, I still had to learn the language and the money and every, all the other nitty-gritty of existence. Um, but emotionally, I was home. I've heard it said that the sensation of truth, or truth has a sensation of remembrance to it. <laughs> like a, Oh, that's a wonderful thing. I have to remember that because that's very much what it was. It's, um, it was like the minute I came across the border, <laughs> which I did on St. Patrick's Day for good luck, all of a sudden it was, everything was cool and calm. Right, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I, I feel uh, I feel a lot better. I don't know how else to say it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's, uh, well, it's just an excellent play. Well, you know, the people are friendly. Um, the the culture is friendly. Um, without some of the difficulties that we have in the states. Right. Yeah. What What would your sort of general advice be to to artists considering this kind of this kind of move? Come down for two weeks, come down for three months, see whether it's what you want to do. The alternative is to do what I did. I sold everything, put what I needed in my car, and came down to stay. I had, had not been here before. You jumped in the deep end. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, well, different strokes for different folks. Some people like to plan for a year or two. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> guilty as charged. <laughs> <laughs> or just come down for 14 years before, uh, <laughs> yeah. off and on before yeah. making that decision. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know, at the right time, there's no decision to make. You just do it. If you're still not able to make a decision, then it isn't the right time. Yeah. That sounds like some of the philosophy I picked up here. <laughs> <laughs> you, do it, you do what you do. And this town of Ehiak, uh, there's been... I know it has a storied past in a lot of ways. D. H. Lawrence was here. Mm -hmm. um, Neil James. Yeah, you know, uh, he, he. and uh, I understand Hemingway was here for just a little bit. I in, didn't in know Jibali. that. Yeah, yeah, and I had trouble finding more information about that. But he is mentioned in conjunction in various places with with this pl uh, town. Um, there's some other other notables, notables, but that was. That was a time when this was a really difficult town to get to in a lot of ways, very secluded. I have a friend, had a friend, he died a couple of years ago, but I had a friend who was down here in the early 50s, and he was a magnificent photographer. His name was Haig Sherkajian. He taught in New York City at one of the universities, I don't know where. But his photographs, he used to ask local people to get all dressed up on a Sunday, the whole family, and he would take photos. Wow. And okay. they were magnificent. The, the basic dignity of the people showed in every photograph. Um, he was, we kind of overlapped. He was here when I first came, and because I had a gallery, I asked him if he'd show his photos. And he, so he had all his photos framed, we hung them, and a lot of the local people were coming in. They were saying, oh, yeah, that's Aunt Gertie. Uh, yeah, that's Tio <laughs> Domingo. You know, it's, uh, they recognized all their relatives from when they were young. And since they don't have a lot of photos even now, it was a tremendous gift to the community. And they were just absolutely beautiful. Um, and, but Ahihik was just a dirt road. Yeah. that led from Chapala out into the country. Chapala was a little more developed. And even at the turn of the century, 
um, Chapala had a vibrant tourist industry. In fact, uh, a lot of the people stayed and built those beautiful Victorian houses that you see there. Yeah. So. Yeah, there's, a, there's definitely a mix of styles and eras, yeah, all the way back yeah. to the conquistador. Oh, yeah. yeah. But they had, the, you know, they had trains running from Guadalajara into Chapala, so people could get there easily. Oh, okay. And, uh, you know, now it's buses and it's still easy. But, uh, but that was, you know, that's better than 100 years ago. Well, yeah, I understand the sewer system went in about 30 years ago and uh, <laughs> things like that. But, I mean, as I, I noticed that some of the changes that have happened since I've been visiting my parents here off and on just a few times, but uh, I noticed there's a lot more cars. Well, a lot more of the Mexicans have cars, you yeah. know. Um, they have cars their parents didn't. Uh, it's, it's very seldom do you see people in their 60s that drive cars. Uh, most of the old men are riding bicycles or horses. Yeah. And uh, I still like to hear the sound of the horses going down the street at night. It, yeah, it seems It seems like, I mean, I'm considering getting a bicycle or a moped, but I mean, it seems like a horse might be a viable option uh, to actually get around <laughs> here. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking of a burro. <laughs> yeah. a little guard donkey or something uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. as well tell you, it's a bit tricky walking at night here sometimes with all the dogs running around <laughs> it's, it's nothing like having a pet donkey which would help protect you <laughs> if you'd stop carrying steak around you with you it wouldn't be such a yeah, problem I'll, I'll get rid of that pork chop necklace that <laughs> seems to attract so much attention yeah there definitely seems to be a, um, a real tradition among the Guadalajarians now Guadalajara for those of you at home who are unfamiliar with it, um, is about a 45 minute drive away from this location. And it's, there's no exact census, but it's, it's basically, I, I guess, between six and eight million people. And it's, it's Probab a, probably closer to six million. Yeah. But it has magnificent museums. Oh, and, gosh, yes. Yeah. And parks. And the historic district um, has things dating from the time when the French were here and running the country, which was fairly brief, but they brought beautiful architecture in. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a magnificent city and very, very clean. Yeah. It's... Um, I, I could spend uh, two weeks in like one block, you know, oh, like photographing yeah. and talking oh, yeah. talking to the people there. It was... It was oh, yeah. We were, when we went, uh, we went there last week, it was almost overwhelming. Like we only spent four hours, but... Well, the, the public venues for art, like the University of Guadalajara, has a magnificent museum, which dates from the turn of the century. And they show world-class artists there, um, most of whom are Mexican. Um, you know, they, they live fairly close. Um, the ex-convento del Carmen, magnificent, I think it's 16th century convent, um, again, Many art shows and just first-rate work. Um, that's the part of the city that I like the best. Yeah, uh, we walked around the old district, uh, and but some of the the areas just around it, some very poor areas and some very uh, middle-class um, little shop areas and, and things. So it was as complex and, and fascinating as any historic city yeah, that size. Yeah. Oh yeah. But I mean, as as an artist. Uh, like, it's interesting because it, it's a parallel to where I'm living now in, in Hamilton, Ontario. It's like 45 minutes away from Toronto. Um, Hamilton's bigger, but it's still a, it's considered a smaller city that's by a lake, has a burgeoning, you know, artist community in it. Um, in a lot of ways, it's very post-industrial, like like Ahiak and Chapala are, and you know, uh, in in many ways. So, but I mean, moving here, it, it, considering that possibility that oh, okay, this is a very small town, but it's just a quick bus ride away to like, if you really need a big city or a huge gallery scene or something, it's, it seems to be right there. And I imagine there's probably some, excuse me, really great art supply uh, stores in, in Guadalajara. No, actually we do just about as well here. Yeah? Yeah, um, I get most of my supplies locally. The things that I can't get locally, I actually bring in from, from the States. But there's not much that I can't get. Right. It's it's specialized stuff that that's hard to find. Well, printmaking stuff, yeah. And, yeah, awesome. and and Guadalajara does have a certain amount of that. There's also a gentleman that makes presses and sells printmaking tools, and he's local. Oh wow! Okay. It's uh, um, the art scene in Ahihik 
is, although it lacks the big venues, the important ones, um, there's still an opening almost every weekend. Um, and some of the artists will probably make the history books someday. It's, uh, there's some very, very good people working here. I've heard, and if you read the literature, some of the promotional, especially literature about Ahiak, you'll, you'll have it here described as an artist colony. Now, I'm not, I'm still not sure what an artist colony really is. I keep thinking like some sort of like, you know, motel populated by artists who all work together in the courtyard <laughs> or something. I don't know. Sharing chickens, but what, <laughs> so, to, I mean, is this what this place is? is? Would you describe it as an artist colony? I'm not sure what an artist colony yeah. <laughs> is either, but there's a tremendous number of them. Um, and they range from Kathy Seaboyer, who's a tremendously talented Canadian painter, um, to Jesus Lopez Vega, who's, who grew up in Ahihik and learned with Neil James, uh, and now teaches and does uh, some wonderful paintings. Um, and Juan Navarro, also Mexican, also grew up here, who teaches at the at, uh, Los Cabanas. Um, in Guadalajara, uh, fantastic printmaker. And, and there's any number of good people here that, whose, whose work you will relate to or not, but there's a number of talented people here. So in that sense, it is a, a community maybe more than a colony. Yeah, I think, I think that's a whole lot better. Okay. It's um, because most of the artists know each other, share information, you know, go into museums together from time to time, help find supplies when they're necessary, um, and attend each other's openings. We, we, you know, we all support each other. And I think that's the important part of it. Um, you don't come down here and start working and doing wonderful work and have everybody ignore you. <laughs> the, the community is actually Really? Because that's the way it is in Canada. Yeah. Is it? <laughs> well, oh. it can be. I mean, that's... It's, uh, yeah, in a, in Maine, uh, you know, I had a nice circle of people that I could count on to support what I was doing, and I, and I have that here, right. and more of it. So, it's <laughs> just because there's more of us. Yeah, well, I've already met some very uh, wonderful, interesting people in the yeah. short time here. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I think uh, Pat, I think that that'll do uh, for this interview. Uh, I hope to continue this interview in a year <laughs> when oh, I come I, back I hope down. I do. It's been really nice talking to you. I've enjoyed it. Well, thanks. Thanks very much, Pat. And okay. uh, I'll have the uh, uh, information um, about your studio and, and your next show posted below. Sounds excellent.